Hey, if I've got my Germany mug, we must be talking Germany. That's right. Hi, I'm Arnie and this is Arnie Jacobson TV and here we talk travel. And if you're into that, why don't you consider subscribing? Just click that big red subscribe button, click the bell icon below so you won't miss anything and check the show notes for even more details. Yes, today we are talking Germany. I mean, after all, if you're thinking about traveling to Europe, you're thinking, at least in part, going to Germany. And we're going to look at 12 beautiful towns to visit in Germany, specifically the southern part today. And uh, you're going to see some gorgeous, gorgeous places. Some of them I have been to, and I'll throw in some uh, extra little tidbits as I uh, feel it's necessary. Uh, other places... I'm excited to see. I'm sure that, you know, I mean, I know that I haven't been there and I might be able to learn a little bit. So what do you say we get going and see how this turns out? Welcome back, folks. At first couple of scenes are Neuschwanstein in Bavaria, one of the most iconic castles in Germany, in, in, in Europe. And it's it was the place that... Uh, where Walt Disney got the idea for the castle at, at Walt Disney or Disneyland. Yeah, it's not in the world, but so. Now, I have been to Tower. Rotenburg ob der Tauber, and everything that he says is spot on. It is a remarkable, remarkable town. Very touristy. Rotenburg ob der Tauber is a town that fairy tales are based on. You'll find yourself transported into the world of the Brothers Grimm as you walk through the twisty streets of the old center, which is full of immaculately preserved medieval. Look at that. I mean, this is, this is quintessential Rotenburg. The clock tower there and the old buildings, the medieval buildings. Rotenburg was fortunate to not have sustained much damage during the Second World War, so it's original and one of the things i would recommend if you go is to make sure that you go um, out early in the morning well actually one of the better things to do is if you're is to go and stay here so because it's a day trippers paradise a lot of people come in just for the day and then leave and it gets really crowded but if you're there early and uh, you can get up early before the crowds arrive or stay later after they leave, you get the place to yourself. Walk the walls. Uh, it's it's a magnificent place. Now, many of these are quite something and definitely worth seeing. So if you could spend just a little more time exploring them, you might find them extremely wonderful. Now, the town's unique appearance has made it particularly attractive for movie makers. You may recognize some of the town from both the Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part one and part two. By the way, I will, I have made a couple of um, videos on Rotenburg and I'll leave a link in the upper corner so that you can check those out too if you're interested. Number two, Dinkelsbühel. <laughs> now, Dinkelsbühel is just a little bit south of Rotenburg. Both of them are on the what's called the Romantic Road or the Romantische Straße. Um, and I, my wife and I stopped into Dinkelsbühel once uh, several years ago. We didn't, weren't there very long. It looks charming as all get out, but... I can't speak to it as much, so let's see what he has to say about Dinkelsbühel. One thing to note about well, we took a great picture along this this stream. There was a, a boat over in the right hand corner at the time, and uh, from the bridge, it was it was awesome. Is that it gets a crazy number of tourists every year, especially during the summer months and in December. 
but nearby Dinklesbjörg has all the charm, but without all the people elbowing you out of the way for that picture. This town is far less crowded than their modern population, and what this translates to you is that you're able to get prime people watching seats at many streetside cafes. Now, there's no better way to experience German culture than watching people every day. The things that happen before your very eyes as you sip, relax, enjoy your afternoon cup of coffee, and enjoy a pastry or two. This is the town for you to do that. This is a new one for me. Lindau. This town is located in the south I've of never Germany, been to Lindau. right on the border between Germany and Austria, and right on the picturesque shores close of Lake Constance, it, never been. otherwise Budensee. Pretty much anywhere you walk along the water, you can look out and see the Alps off into the distance. At least, you can if your eyes aren't glued to the half-timbered houses and historic German lakes are so pristine. It's so a many of them, you know, resort, you're, you're not allowed to use motorboats. Plenty of outdoor activities, as well as wandering through the town. Next up is Kohum. Oh, Kohum, you guys, is a splendid, splendid place. It's on the Mosul River, and uh, it's, it's, if you're there when it, the clouds are low, it's very moody. When the sun is out, it's so bright. And um, farther down, I think it would be going west from Kochum, along the river is a little town called Beilstein. We, we've stayed in Beilstein. It's a tiny little village, but it is so picturesque. Nestled in the, the uh, vineyards, this is a super place to go. And by the way... I'm not sure if he's going to mention it, but there's a great castle here, the Kochum Castle, which was built in the 18 rebuilt in the 1800s, and up in the hills, up out of the valley, is one of the best um, uh, castles in German in Germany, Borgelts, and I've done a, a, a video on that as well, so I'll leave that up in the corner too. Gotham is a tiny medieval riverside town that is absolutely idyllic. While taking in great tours of the river oh, valley, there's, there's be sure to stop castle. by and see its towering castle in the thousand-year-old history. Look at the, valley of, with the, Mosul going the town itself there. boasts medieval town gates and beautiful churches as well as those narrow streets and winding alleyways. Lined with restored half-timbered houses with slated roofs you'll find many of these wonderful places to see. Stroll through the historic market flats and pop into one of the restaurants where owners will take the time to introduce you to some of the area's great Rieslings. This town is particularly perfect for those who enjoy drinking wine. The Mosul is an idyllic river. Unlike the Rhine, the Mosul is very sleepy. Number five, Ramsau. Ramsau, I've never heard of. If Doesn't you're looking for a lovely? quaint Alpine village to spend your days in, now look no further than Ramsau. Although it's home to roughly around 3,000 people, there are tons of things for you to do in this area. Now, whether you're into hiking, skiing, swimming, stargazing, or whatever that is, just relaxing and feasting on German food is something that you can do right here. And yeah, that church looks quite nice as well. Straight out right of a fairy tale. The town, the foothills of the Alps, it's just gorgeous there, isn't it? I can't wait to see that. Oh, number six. Bamberg, Bamberg is another one of those towns. It's farther north than we have been so far, north of um, Rotenburg. It's a great, great town, really popular. Bamberg became a UNESCO heritage city in the early 90s, and it's easy to see why, given that medieval architecture that presents itself in the old town. 
The city is spread over seven different hills and is known for its arch bridges. One of the main sights to see in Bamberg is its unique Rathaus. But you'll also find we similar fairy so style hot. buildings around the town. Unbearably so. And Check out the old court, which was once home to the bishop. And Bamberg is also well known for its numerous breweries. So if that's your thing, go nuts. Number seven. Passau. At the nexus of three different rivers. Oh, we, we had, this is such a great, such a great uh, city. There's opposing castles, if you will, on opposite hills. Very walkable place. I'll put the link to that video also. Passau. Passau is one of the prettiest and let's say best preserved it, medieval towns in Southeast Germany also. and all of Europe. It's been dubbed the Venice Bavaria for its idyllic setting on the glossy river. Lovely Passau is built on a slender tapering peninsula surrounded by these three rivers. And at times it seems like they almost float above the water with rows of pastel houses that line the That's banks of all three rivers, castle. it's no wonder this place has such a reputation. A short hike will take you to the Vesterhoba House, a 13th century if you're fortress American, of turrets, walls, You need to go here, you may not have ever heard of it. Beautiful place. Only 26 minutes drive Fritzler. away from Kassel lies the town of Fritzlar. Scattered with half timbered houses and having a marketplace that looks straight out of a Disney what World theme park, it's hard to believe that this is a genuine town. And not purely built In case you haven't guessed, so far these are all Fritzlar small towns. Much of its medieval architecture, Get including the old the marriage house, dating back from 1580. On the highest point of the town stands... There's so much more to, to Germany, to any country, than, than the big cities. And oftentimes people will go to Munich or something like that, and they won't take the time to go see places like this. Number nine. All right. <laughs> We're going no north... Uh, again, uh, to Quedlinburg. Quedlinburg is, as you're going to see, an amazing place that has survived somehow the war. It is so amazing. And by the way, I'll, um, there's a town just north of it that we also visited and we stayed in for a couple of days, Goslar. I'll put a, a, a link to both those videos. Um, I'm going to shut up and, and watch. We could just watch The existence of Kredlingborg can be traced back to the 9th century and boasts of the rare history of being ruled by women for 800 long years. Sorry ladies, those days are gone. It houses steep roofed half timbered buildings from at least five countries and a medieval old town all still preserved in their original condition. How can I put this? If there was ever a contest for the most quaint town, the UNESCO World Heritage Town of Quedlingborg would be an unrivaled contender. Really brings back fond memories. Number 10, Heidelberg. Number 10, mm -hmm. 
Heidelberg is Heidelberg. considered one of the most beautiful so cities been, in it's, Germany. It's, it's easy to see why visitors uh, flock straight for the castle, which is set there, upon its throne mistaken. on the hill. The picturesque castle, the old town, and the river Neckar, surrounded by hills, has inspired poets and artists over the years. Oh, look at that. Together with the old bridge, it is among the most impressive sites to be found in Germany. It's also home to Germany's oldest university. In the center of town lies there the Marktplatz Square. I wasn't mistaken, was I? Many beautiful fountains, grand period houses, cafes, and even more little shops. So here's a stat for you. Did you know that the largest barrel in the world is stored in the castle's wine cellar? Take a look. No, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. I wonder how big. I wish he would have said how big it was. I have to look that up. Number 11. Verne Garuda. Verne Garuda is an attractive town that sits Verne on the Garuda. northern edge of the Hart region. Oh! So this is very near Tvedlinburg and Goslar, which he isn't showing uh, at this point, but they're all in the same area. I don't know how we missed this. We were there in 2018, so... It makes an <laughs> ideal base for ago. exploring the Hartz National Park, in addition to offering many of its own allures. It's famous for its unique Hearts architecture, Mountain with its town considered beautiful. one of the country's most important landmarks. But it's also known for its dark history of witches as a former center for many followers of the black arts. So if there's any of you witches out there, this is the town just for you. Oh, look at the leaning walls there. Wow. Number 12. Number 12. Marburg. Marburg. The student town of Marburg lies about an hour north shot. of Frankfurt and is a great choice for a day trip or even a weekend excursion. You will be greeted by idyllic river views, a romantic city centre, countless bars, here. cafes and restaurants, and of course, a castle overlooking the town from the hilltop. It goes without saying that Tower. castles are going to be the tower built on the hilltop, in most cases. is a popular panoramic view of the city and the castle. But just remember, climb is at least 167 steps. So if you're lazy, you better not go. There you have it folks, 12 beautiful towns for you to visit on your next trip to Germany. Is it any wonder that I love Germany, well I, I'm of German heritage, my mother is from Germany and so on and so forth, but it's such a gorgeous place. And right now we're seeing mostly the southern portion, although it did get a little bit farther north. Um, there are lots of beautiful places um, north as well, but this was simply stunning. Hey, if you like travel and you like this kind of content, make sure that you click that subscribe button, click the bell icon, leave a comment, um, give us a thumbs up. You know the drill. We do appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by and we will see you in the next one. Hopefully... We'll be traveling in the not-too-distant future. Thanks again. See you later.